Hi everyone! Um, as promised, I decided I'm going to do a little video about how I make my own waxed canvas. Um, so just to start, I'm going to go over a few supplies that you might need and then I will get my mac wax melting and um, I'll show you how I hand dye. Well, I'm not going to show you the dyeing process in this video, but I will show you the dyeing process in another video. But this is my hand dyed canvas. It was white canvas that I purchased and I did sort of a tie dye method on it. And I'm going to wax it so that I can make bags. Anyways, so let's get started with some supplies. Right here, you can see I have an old crock pot. This crock pot is one I only use for melting wax in. It, it just a regular, I bought, I bought it at a thrift shop for maybe $10. So get yourself a little crock pot and um, an inexpensive crock pot and use it only for wax. You should not be using this later down the road for any kind of food. I have a measuring cup just in case I need it just to kind of measure out the wax that I'm going to use. I have just a regular large paintbrush. I think I bought this at Dollarama um, and I use this just for waxing my canvas. I have a little bucket here of beeswax. Now this beeswax looks very yellow. It is actually from a local farm and a friend of mine who keeps bees gives me their beeswax and I melt it down into little chunks and that's what I use for my wax canvas. I also have some paraffin wax. This I purchased I think at Michael's. You can buy para wax, whatever you like, um, but paraffin wax. This is actually a coconut and paraffin wax blend. And I have an iron, a very cheap little Procter Silex iron that I use only for waxing. This iron um, just wasn't great for sewing or doing anything. It's very light and inexpensive. And so I don't mind if I, it's covered in wax. As you can see, maybe you can see that there's a lot of wax residue on there. So what I will do is I mix my beeswax and my paraffin wax at a 60 paraffin wax, 40 beeswax percentage. So I'm going to measure that out um, as, as close as I can get. I mean, these are solids, so it's hard to really get an accurate measurement, but I just eyeball it. So for this, this is split into three chunks. I will probably use two of these chunks and then I will throw in um, what I feel is about the equivalent of 40% of beeswax. Before I measure out my wax, I do want to mention that turn your crock pot on. I turn it on to high. Your wax should melt together fairly quickly. It takes maybe about 20 minutes. And once all of your wax is in a liquid state, then we can get on with waxing the canvas. So I have my little measuring cup here. I don't think it really needs to go in a measuring cup, but there is my paraffin wax. And then I'm going to break some of these beeswax chunks. I think I might need a little bit more than that. And I'll drop these in there. That looks about right to me. So I'm gonna put this in my crock pot. I've already turned the crock pot on to high. And I actually might cut down these paraffin. Oh, maybe not. It's quite difficult. Anyways, <laughs> that was a fail. I'm just going to drop them in there. And I'm going to let this go for about 20 minutes or so and come back and give it a little stir, see where we're at. Okay, so it has been about 20, 25 minutes. And because I didn't cut my wax down into smaller pieces, I'll try and kind of show you that. It is taking a little bit longer to melt. 
Um, not to worry though, we are going to get going shortly. It's starting to really move along. Um, sorry about all the camera movement here. Anyways, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the fabric that I'm using. So this was a canvas fabric that I purchased um, in bulk. It was white. Um, I think I purchased it at Fabricland for like $5 a meter. And I thought, hey, I can dye that and um, wax it myself. So here we are. Um, this is... I don't know what measurement it is. It's at least a meter of fabric. I have it doubled over. So if you can see here, I have it folded over. And what we're gonna do, make sure there's no debris on it. I have a few little wax chunks on here from trying to cut my wax on top of the fabric. But what we're gonna do, I'm gonna leave it folded over and I'm going to wax this whole side. And then I'm gonna flip it over. I'm going to wax the other side as well. So by folding it over, you kind of save yourself a little bit of wax um, because it will seep through to the other side. And then on the second side, you won't have to add quite as much wax to that side. The amount of wax I have here is probably more than enough to do this piece of fabric. I can likely do two pieces this size. Um, and I do want to mention underneath, I have an old board. It's just a piece of plywood that I've taken an old sheet and covered it. Um, I use this always just for waxing canvas. And it lives in my garage and I pull it out whenever I decide to do some wax canvas. Anyways, I'm going to come back to you once my little pot here has completely melted. I have a silicone spoon that I use to stir it around and hopefully make this process go a little bit faster. But I will come back to you once this is all melted and we're ready to go. Hi, welcome back. Okay, so my wax is melted. Um, there's one tiny little chunk left in there, but uh, let's see if I can get you to see a tiny little chunk, but melted enough that I think we can get started here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to turn on my iron to a fairly high heat, no steam on the iron. Just want to make sure that I mentioned that steam and wax don't go well together. So just make sure that you don't have any steam going on with your iron. I'm going to turn this baby on and I'm going to get my paintbrush in the wax. It's a little stiff from the last time I waxed. I'm going to get it flexible and melted down so I can paint my wax on properly. So now, really, all we're going to do here is take the paintbrush and start at the top corner. Grab some wax on your brush. And I'm going to start painting on the wax. So this is melting quite... Er, <laughs> not melting. It is solidifying quite quickly. So I'm going to put a good layer on here as my iron heats up. You want to make sure you cover every inch of this canvas. Put some wax on there. So as even as you can get it on there, I mean, we're going to iron this in. So if it's not perfectly even, we can fix those areas. Because I'm using natural beeswax, this actually smells really good in here. It almost smells like honey in my sewing room, which is really nice. Okay, so I have a good first layer on here. I'm going to put my paintbrush down. I'm going to take a peek at my iron. It's nice and hot, and all I'm going to do here is just iron in the wax and melt it right into that canvas. Now this will darken up your canvas a little bit, so keep that in mind when you're dyeing that the finished color will be a little darker 
than your dyed canvas. And I just keep going over these areas to make sure that the wax is melted in there really nicely. Pay good attention to your edge here that's folded. Um, I am going to unfold this and wax the other side eventually, but and this is going to seal that wax right into the canvas and prevent the dyes from fading. This will make your canvas almost completely waterproof. Now, a nice thing about wax canvas too is um, you can redo the wax. If you feel like your canvas is not, um, doesn't, the wax is not um, keeping your canvas waterproof enough, um, after a year of use of a bag that you've made, something like that, you can come back in and carefully wax again or reactivate the wax with your iron, which is a nice little trick. You could also leave your bag out on a hot sunny day, lay it out in the sun for a while, and that will reactivate the wax in your canvas. So I'm just trying to avoid having any big large chunks of wax in any area. Make sure that it's melted down nicely. And I can see already some areas that may not have been waxed as much. See these lighter areas here. So I can come back in and wax those again. Sometimes you gotta give your iron a minute to heat up again. So I definitely see some areas here that I'm going to go back over again with my brush to make sure that I've covered them well with wax. Now this fabric specifically I dyed for um, my friend Kim. I'm going to make her a bag with this. We were at the Rhinebeck Sheep and Wool Festival and she saw a bag that she really loved but you know, it was Sunday and we'd spent all our money and I said, hey, I can make that for you. So I'm getting as close as I can to the pattern that she saw. It's not going to be an exact copy, but um, I think I'm going to make a wool and wax tote with this fabric, which is a noodle head pattern. Okay, so I'm just going to come back in here into a few areas where I noticed the wax didn't really penetrate well to the fabric. Get my edge up here. There's a spot right here that could use some more. A couple spots down here. Right. And I'm going to come back in with my iron again. Melt that wax. I just do little circular motions, hold the iron for a little little bit over the area. You don't want to sit your iron on the fabric for too long. You don't want it burning, but sliding it over. little cheapy iron a second to recover. As you can see, yes, there's a little bit of wax on the iron, but it doesn't really destroy your iron. I use this, this is probably the 15th time I've waxed canvas with it, and it's still going, going strong. So just like I said, no steam. Make sure you're not using any steam. You're just looking to make sure you don't have any big chunks of wax hanging out on the surface. You want to make sure you melt it in there really well. And of course, the more wax that you add, the stiffer your fabric will be.
So this side is almost done. Then I'm going to flip this over and we're going to wax the other side. So you can see this is not a really super time consuming process. The most time consuming part of this job is actually melting the wax in your crock pot. <laughs> but um, as long as you protect your surface, make sure that you've got something under, under your fabric that you don't mind being ruined or used for waxing all the time. Um, this is actually kind of fun and it's really satisfying to be able to create any color of canvas you want. Quite expensive to buy wax canvas in, in shops. There are many shops out there that do sell beautiful wax canvas, but um, I like my custom canvas. Okay, so now what you can see is this wax has actually kind of come through to the back already and it has soaked through. So um, having it folded like this kind of saves you a little bit of work on the next side. You won't use quite as much wax on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and you can see it's quite stiff. Um, as this cures, it will stiffen up even more. So, all right, this is what it looks like unwaxed. And this is what it looks like waxed. You can see there's quite a difference in how deep the color is here. A couple spots here I missed. Any, anytime you see any little bits of wax that you're not happy with, just come back over it with the iron and melt it in there. Okay, so I'm going to flip this guy over. And what I'm going to do, actually, because I had a crease here, I'm going to fold it a little bit differently, just so I can really get the wax to cover the entire piece. I don't really like this crease hanging out here. I'm going to pass my iron over that before I put any more wax. Okay. All right. Second side. Crack butt lid off, get my paintbrush in there. I'm just going to start at the top. You can also work in sections here. Um, sometimes I'll do that. Just start at the top, iron it in, then keep working my way down the fabric. But you'll get a feel for how it works best for you. In the interest of getting this video accomplished fairly quickly, I'm just going to paint the entire piece with wax and then we'll iron the wax in. Now, once this is, you've let this sit and cure for 12 to 24 hours, I would say, um, it's ready to go for sewing. Now, I don't wax the wrong side of my fabric. Some people do. Um, I don't feel it's necessary. I feel like the outside being waxed is plenty, but you could choose to open this up and wax the inside. I feel like enough wax gets um, soaks through that you don't necessarily need to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna get in here with my iron and we're gonna start melting this in. This iron will actually spread the wax around for you so you get a nice even coat. And I apologize, my husband's just coming home from work, so if you hear him come in, sorry about that.
see a spot here that I'm going to have to go over again. Okay, we're almost done, and I'm going to go back in a little fuzz that was stuck on my fabric. Do you want to be careful to make sure that your fabric doesn't have a lot of fuzzy debris on it, because that will get waxed right in. And I'm seeing on this side a couple of bits. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little bit more to the top here. This area here, and more here. So, one thing I did not do that I normally would, um, I forgot to show you, is before I start adding wax to my canvas. I will usually take the hot iron to it and just heat it up a little bit so that when you're putting the wax down, it adheres a little bit better. And I forgot to do that this time, but not to worry. It should not make a huge difference. And really, that's all there is to it. So once this is done and I've waxed it up as much as I'm going to wax it up, I'm just going to lay this out somewhere flat or hang it over a rail or something and let it cure for about 12 to 24 hours. And then your wax canvas is ready to sew with. One more little spot here. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and please like and subscribe to my videos if you're enjoying what you're seeing. It really helps me out and um, hopefully I'll be able to come back and show you how I dyed this fabric. I'll do another video on hand dyeing canvas before you wax it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.